Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today is the busiest day of GDC 23 and we've had some insane announcements and really epic games just finish the day by just killing it. So I don't normally like to do this many videos but I have to cover this because Unreal Engine 5.2 Preview is now available. On top of that we've also got uh, Unreal Engine for Fortnite which I'm going to cover in more detail in the future but I thought I should at least mention it. Uh, plus we've also got this new animation system for MetaHuman. So a ton of announcements here and this is on top of their new Fab which I did its own video up because I think Fab is the biggest piece of news from GDC so far. It is a universal app store. So if you are working in Godot or Unreal or Unity or O3DE or whatever game engine out there, this is like an app store, but for everybody. That is huge news. Check that video out. But today what we're going to talk about is Unreal Engine 5.2, which is now available in preview. You can head on over to the Epic Games Launcher and download it as we speak. They actually did a really cool demo. You're seeing that in the background right now of a Rivian running through a lifelike environment that was populated using Quixel Megascans, and also showing off a couple of the new features of Unreal Engine 5.2, specifically the new substrate shading system, which I'm going to have to get into more depth later on. This is completely replacing their inbuilt shading system, uh, giving you more control and freedom over how things are handling. Uh, this is actually a 5.2 experimental feature, so it's very early on. Who knows what's going to become of it, but I'm going to follow up in a video, maybe next week, about substrate and how it actually works. Uh, and we also saw procedural generation. This stuff is crazy. The procedural tools they showcased uh, at their video are, are just nuts. Also shipping as a 5.2 experimental feature is the procedural content generation stuff. Uh, just impressive things in the 5.2 release. Also, uh, if you are on Apple Silicon, you're going to be happy to know that the Apple University binary natively built both Apple Silicon and Intel CPUs is now available to download from the launcher. So if you're using an M1 chip, you should get better performance out of it. Uh, we've also have uh, a number of improvements to virtual production. Uh, I'm mostly focusing on the game development stuff on this channel, but they've been using more and more for... Uh you know, film production work. Uh, Substrate obviously is the new authoring material system and the procedural content generation framework is just nuts. What it enables you to do is basically populate a large, fast, large environment realistically in just a, at an absolutely staggering amount of time. So what you want to do is check out the roadmap and this gives you an idea of the individual things that happened in this release. There's more than we've talked about here. There's also caustic support, DLSS, DLSS3 support. We talked about that kind of briefly in an earlier video about NVIDIA. Uh, again, the big ones here, though, are, is this new substrate uh, material system replacing the built-in systems that exist right now, uh, replacing like the lit and clear coat shaders. Uh, that's going to be huge. I'll cover it in more detail. Other things definitely got some love as well. So obviously, Nanite got some improvements here, such as custom depth and stencils, uh, lighting channels, global clip plane. Uh, Lumen got updating as well, improved global illumination inclusion on characters, uh, high quality reflections on translucency, and so on, and path tree got a lot more updates as well to bring it more to feature parity with the rasterizer out there. Um, so definitely some big improvements there. Now, the, the key things that you're going to look at when it comes to uh, an Unreal Engine release is things that are experimental generally are brand new to the release. And then as they get more mature, they get more mature, they get flagged as beta and then production ready. So what you're going to see here is, for example, uh, ML Deformers, these are already around. They've actually just improved in this release. You can read the details of how those individual things improved right here in the roadmap. I will, of course, link this in the linked article down below if you want to check that out. Uh, there's also control rig improvements. There is a new control rig example on the asset store that you can download. I don't know if they've mentioned it yet, uh, but do be sure to check that one out. So if you want to check out the new control rig functionality, it is available there. From the experimental side of things, we have render resource viewer has been added in. Uh, and then we come on down here. We've seen a lot of improvements to the polygonal modeling tools that are built directly inside of Unreal Engine. I'm actually going to take a look at this stuff in the future. I think the idea of using Unreal as a modeling tool is just awesome. Uh, they've got improvements to the UV uh, tool and the workflow as well. So big improvements in geometry tools in general, as well as the geometry scripting stuff, which I think this is sort of like uh, geometry nodes in Blender. I haven't really worked with geometry scripting yet, uh, but we got some improvements there as well. Uh, as mentioned earlier on, a number of improvements in the cinematics and virtual production side of things. Not really an area that I'm that concerned with for this channel, but if you're into that world, obviously do know that there were a number of improvements there. I think one of the coolest looking new things here is this new flesh simulation tools for the chaos, chaos physics system. 
system. Uh, they look just absolutely horrifyingly, well, horrifying. Uh, we also have improvements to uh, the cloth system here, which has been upgraded to beta at this point in time. And another one that's really neat is we've got these scriptable tools. Uh, it's a scriptable plugin, exposes the interactive tools framework to blueprints, making it possible for creators and technical artists to create tools that behave similar to modeling mode. Uh, these modal tools can access mouse input, have gizmos, accept cancel and more. So you can want to create your own uh, tools here. You could do them directly uh, using blueprints inside of uh, Unreal Engine. I think that one's going to be a big one, definitely cool. But as you can see, there are a number of improvements here, a lot of things on the roadmap. And then we got little things in here, things like uh, Visual Studio 2022 now being the default, uh, changes the way C++ is compiled, and so on. So that is Unreal Engine 5.2 changes, basically just kind of skimming the surface. Do drill through any of these areas that you're interested in. I don't think we got a formal release notes with this particular release. And again, I do need to warn you, I probably should have started with this. This is a preview release, so obviously do not use it in production. It is not considered production ready. And actually, one of the worrying trends I've found with Unreal Engine is 5 was quite stable. 5.1 was just, whoa. So I wouldn't be surprised if 5.2 is a little bit on the buggy side. Again, do not use these things in production. You generally need to wait for like 5.1.1 before you really want to consider using it in production, uh, but definitely not the preview version. Now, that wasn't it for announcements today, though. We also have the MetaHuman Animator feature set. This was actually demonstrated on stage, and it was really impressive. So they took the girl from uh, Hell, Hellblade, send you a sacrifice, and they actually just captured her with a, uh, an iPhone. And then in real time, they actually transposed that onto MetaHuman Creations. It was a very impressive demo, definitely worth checking out. It's available right here. You can see uh, how they actually did this, but uh, MetaHuman Animator runs locally on your machine instead of actually up in the cloud. Uh, so the demo they did was using an iPhone and then a 40. 80 or a 4090 GPU uh, locally. So uh, if you're using MetaHuman and you want to get more into the animation side of things, the animator feature set will definitely help you out in that regard. Now, another area I haven't touched on at all uh, is they've now brought out Unreal Editor for Fortnite, which is like a subset of Unreal Editor tools, uh, quite a big subset, to be honest, importing, modeling, materials, VFX, sequence or control rig, etc., cetera, uh, for creating Unreal Engine experiences. They're basically turning uh, Unreal Engine, or sorry, turning Fortnite into the kind of the equivalent of uh, Roblox sort of thing. They're, they're turning it into a metaverse creation sort of environment. And this kind of hits nicely into their fab announcement, their new online store I already did a video about, because you're going to be able to publish assets to that store and consume them uh, in your Unreal Editor for Fortnite experience. So uh, definitely they're creating a whole metaverse uh, ecosystem here, even though I despise that term, to be honest. Uh, and the other cool thing here is Verse. Now, Verse at this point in time is not been announced to be in Unreal Engine, but I got to imagine it is coming. It is a new scripting language that they have created specifically for authoring um, experiences in the Fortnite for Unreal Engine tools. So you can see a bit of Verse in action right here. I'm going to look into Verse more. Uh, I'll do a follow-up video on programming in Verse and what the Verse experience is like. I honestly, with all the stuff going on GDC, I haven't had the time to really jump into Verse yet. Uh, but Verse is definitely one of those things that we are uh, the Unreal Engine community is looking at. Uh, and you can see here, here is the key thing. Verse will become a fully supported programming language in Unreal Engine. It will be open source with open API specifications for anyone to use their own, for their own needs or to uh, interface with Epic's ecosystem. So it's basically a standalone programming language and you'll be able to implement if you wanted to put Verse into the Godot game engine or into Unity or as a standalone language, you should be able to do so. So it's cool to hear that Verse is formally confirmed to be coming uh, to Unreal Engine. And yeah, that is it. There's a ton going on across across all of these things. So you can immediately go and download Unreal Engine um, 5.2 Preview. I do believe the UEFN or Unreal Engine for Fortnite is also available to download right now. Uh, and I'm going to be checking out Verse and getting back to you on exactly what that experience is like as well. But a huge day uh, from Unreal Engine slash Epic Games at GDC. Uh, let me know what you think of all of these announcements. What has you most excited? And uh, yeah, that's it. And again, if you haven't already, do check out that fab video because I think that is going to be industry game changing massive news. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.